Are we live? Oh, who is still? Oh, who is still? Hey, kids. Yeah, hi. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your early morning, late out of date, raw review. The raw before, like, what is it? Not Halloween Havoc. <laughs> Oh yeah, I didn't do Halloween Havoc yet. I didn't watch it yet. I'm gonna review it later down the line. Um, Halloween Havoc should be like a thing for like the main roster. By the way, they should do like a Halloween Havoc week. That way, people could I don't know enjoy at least the freaking show. I don't know something. Um, but yeah, that that's just what happened. I don't know. They they're doing it for NXT for some goddamn reason. I don't know. I get it. Just make people care for NXT, but no one's going to care, really. Like, uh, like it's still developmental, you know? You're bearing off doing Halloween Havoc. Like, sure, NXT could be part of it. What they should do is that they should do, like, a Halloween Havoc week. Like, where, you know, Raw, they'll have their own version of Halloween Havoc, then SmackDown, then NXT could have their, like, basically a Halloween Havoc week by the time of October. And it's, it'll be, like, a special thing where, like, you know, you could do, like, those show like, those shows have matches on the, like, title matches on the line. And also, every match is determined by the spin of the wheel. Like, make the shows, like, be exciting. Imagine if this Raw was Halloween Havoc. The show would have been so much better. You know, like, would have been, like, the, the build, the, just things happening on the show, the matches, some stories that could have happened to even lead up to, like, Crown Jewel, even, you know? But no, they didn't do it, sadly. Um, so that's what happened. Uh, so Crown Jewel is this sun, did not Sunday, Saturday. And now, now it's this, uh, the fuck is really given for the show. Especially, it's so weird. Like, they pre tape SmackDown. We're supposed to be tending care of SmackDown as they act like the internet age doesn't exist. We're supposed to be tending care for SmackDown this Friday. They're trying to build also to Friday night this, this coming up. And... Who the fuck's gonna really care? Like, they're trying to build a Friday when, really, we already know what the fuck happened. Like, this is why I'm just thinking to myself, and I'm just saying, why didn't they just, like, wait till maybe they go to Saudi and do a SmackDown at Saudi like they did uh, this past year? You know, they could do the SmackDown in Saudi. It'll be a tape delay for this show, for th this week for us in America, but who cares? At least it'll be something like it, something happens kind of, like, live. You know, and then people will, will watch, I don't know, just something like that. Because I'm not a fan of, like, taped shows. I mean, I, I or whatever, like, unless you do something. If wrestling was actually exciting, people would actually look forward to see, like, a show even if it's taped. But it's not, you know. You already have spoilers, and, like, the spoilers just means, like, okay, this is what happened. You don't need to waste your time watching it, at least. This is why I would be at least more a fan of this happening in the, the they did a Saudi Smackdown. There's apparently, they're apparently going to do a... Uh, Saudi Raw this year, but it's been on a Sunday. Like, can they just do the Monday? Like, but why not do both shows? They do fucking the Friday night there, and then the Monday night there. They'll come back on Tuesday, whatever, they rest up, and then they'll be ready for the start fresh for a new SmackDown in the States. It's really not so hard, you know? I don't know. I guess they're scheduling. I don't know, they just kind of seem to make it hard for themselves or don't really care to actually be World Wrestling Entertainment. You're re World Wrestling Entertainment, yet you refuse to do something that involves you being the World Wrestling Entertainment where you could do international shows. Like, for God's sakes, they did, like, a UK tour recently, and ra ra rather than doing a UK tour, they literally did, like, a SmackDown or a Raw before the UK tour, and they didn't even record it. Like, you don't even do Raws anymore internationally, like, uh... You barely do it. I mean, they're doing it only this year for Saudi, I guess. But, like, God damn it. What happened to the days when you decided to do a UK tour and you do a Raw and SmackDown internationally, you know? Like, God forbid, give, give the fans something to look forward to than just a UK tour where it's just a bunch of stupid house shows that no one gives a fuck about. But whatever. Um, but anyways, let's move on to just Raw. Raw was pretty much filler. Okay, it was pretty much filler it, at the most part. It was very boring. Uh, we, you know, it, it, not an ounce was much given, sadly, for for Smack for Raw. Uh, and no, not an ounce would be care for SmackDown because SmackDown with the results, like no one really is gonna, gonna care. So, anyways, but yeah, grab your Coca Cola. It's drinking magnificently. Inspire me to just go. Oh shit! Oh shit! Especially it's Halloween 
week, ladies and gentlemen, okay? This is Howie Week. You know, y'all about to get turned up, you know? Oh, shit, oh, shit, cheers, motherfuckers. It's Halloween week, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Halloween weekend kind of came, but there's still, like, Halloween weekend basically this coming weekend. Even though Halloween's on a Thursday, but hey, we're about to get turned up. Ooh, cheers, motherfuckers. I'm happy colas. Freaking magnificently spy this bitch is going, oh, shit, oh, shit, the baby like cow. Especially with the chicks in their freaking Halloween costumes, man. They about to be dressing like total sluts and not be judged for it. Just like the movie Mean Girls, you know what I mean? It's the truth. True words have been spoken. And let's talk about, uh, let's get this done. So, so Raw happened. Uh, I'm just going to probably scroll through it because nothing much really happened on this show. In all honesty, like this show was just like, okay, whatever. This happened, so and so. You know what I mean? Uh, show started with, uh, you know, oh, again, yeah, Seth Rollins is, is on the, uh, Seth Rollins is on, uh, Monday Night Raw, like, they showcase him, I get it, he's serious and whatever, and yet we proceed to see him, like, just, oh, he's serious and whatever, they introduce all these wrestlers, and get it, he's here, he's here, guys, he's here! You know, last week, they portrayed Seth Rollins as, like, a, as a, as a, like, you know, tough guy, right, but then, for God's sakes, this guy ended up freaking... Ruining, like, support, like, you know, he could have been something. Like, you could have, like, instead of being this gay, like, I'm a revolutionary originary, he ends up freaking being just the shittiest, like, cringy fucking chromo cutter. Like, give me a break. Anyways, the show started really with Jey Uso after, like, oh, they waste their time showcasing the wrestlers entering the ring or whatever. Jey Uso says, Jey Uso died in the city! Or whatever type of shit, right? But then... Uh, hold on a second. Du, 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 du. So, but then he says, oh, "I want SmackDown Uso, and he took care of family business." And then we see Jimmy also Uso come out like, "Oh, Getty's not alone, right?" Um, Jimmy says, "Like you know, we brothers and she, we we brothers. We go get these ye 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 Like they're like, shut up. Like you're ruining the moment." Enough with this stupid dumb talk. But then we see Jey Uso come out like, oh, but get it? They have a little dissension with each other. Like, I thought the whole idea of y'all getting together, you guys ended the peace. Now you guys having dissension? Like, this is not how shit's supposed to be. Like, now they still have dissension with each other? Like, what kind of shit is that? Whatever. Um, Jey Uso then says, like, you know, I, I did my own, you know, I left the bloodline, I did things my own, you know, now I'm Monday Night Raw, I eat, I did my own, you know, I, I became a guy champion, you got you oos, there's none of those champions mean uh, more, that, but those, those champions mean more than being your twin, that's why I come to help, you mean she, you know, uh, he said that, you know, oh, like he did everything on his own, you know, we, we just fought against each other back at WrestleMania. But you know, uh, but I, I became my own man after all the bleach with the bloodline. But then I came to one my road to be my own man. But it won't never be different than me being your brother, Oose, and whatever. Like, okay, family shit, you know, get it, you know, I get it, whatever. And then he agrees, like, you know, I'm gonna go to SmackDown and I'm gonna talk to Roman. And we go, we go, but we got, if we do this, we, we ain't nobody do, bro. We, we ain't gonna do the no yes, man. We, we, we gonna be equal. It's like, you know, like, oh, there's like, they want to establish that, oh, you know, everybody's equal. There's no tribal chief type of shit. Like, oh, we ain't the ones, but we got to be, if we are the ones, we ain't got to be equality and shit. So I was like, okay, fair enough. But then we see the bloodline, they attacked, well, the new bloodline, they attacked, they attempt to attack Jimmy Uso and Jay Uso. They attacked them, they beat them up a little bit. My only problem with this is that... We're supposed to believe Jacob Fatu and Solo Sokoa as these guys who can't get beat up easily. Yet they basically proceed to beat them up easily. Except Solo, like Solo was not even involved. But Jacob Fatu, you're building this guy as this anomaly. This guy who can barely get, like, beaten up. Yet, he get easily taken out by both the Usos. That, like, that's my problem there. Like, that is so easy. Like, what the hell? Building up... Jacob Fat 2 as this guy who can't easily be beaten up. And yet, 
And yet, like, he, he's, like, already taken out by the Usos with the stupid, dumb super kicks. Like, what are we doing here? Like, come on. Like, I would have liked it, honestly. Like, especially when they pre tape SmackDown. You know, it would make sense that they want Roman's help. They should have had, like, you know, I guess some sort of way that they still beat down the Uso, but they're struggling. Heck, I mean, even maybe with the help of Sami Zayn could have helped, like, with this. Like, why didn't maybe Sami come out for this segment? You know, I, especially what they did on this show, it would make somewhat sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, uh, why not Sammy got involved in this segment first and then what they did on the show? Um, Adam Pierce is on the phone with Nick Aldis arguing, you know, I, I, didn't, I agreed to Jimmy, but not to the entire bloodline. And then he's angry. And then uh, Nick, uh, Dominic says, like, yo, who's my former world champion opponent? And then Adam Pierce reveals, oh, it's Damian Priest. So they're like hyping this entire week. Who's Dominic going to face? Is it going to be someone like a fir- returning world champion? No. It's fucking the most predictable bullshit shocker. Whatever. You know what I mean. It's like, oh, Damian Priest. What a shocker. Like, great. Yeah, like, uh, you, who didn't see that in a mile away? Like, I guarantee you, if you did not bet a million dollars, you probably would be so fucking dumb you'll lose the bet. If you were not betting Damian Priest, that's an easy million dollar win. I mean, not always, because you never know. But, like, the thing is, in how predictable wrestling is nowadays, like, god damn it. They had, it had to be Damian Priest. Like, Damian Priest, how many times we have seen this garbage? Like, they only did this just to remind us, get it? Damian Priest is feuding with these guys, yet... We have barely even seen Damian Priest feuding with, like, we have not even seen anything build up with this feud and, since, like, Bad Blood. So, we're supposed to rem- remember they're still they're still feuding? It's not like, first, yeah, like, this is the most stupidest shit, by the way. Like, Damian Priest has not done yet, nothing since Bad Blood. Same thing with the Judgment Day, even with Finn Balor. And yet, we're supposed to believe they're still sub- supposedly feuding. What are we doing here? I don't know. Is this the problem with the whole five match per pay-per-view bullshit? Would they rather not build so much for that? I don't know. I don't fucking know. It's all kind of dumb. Um, and if I was like, don't, you know, I don't know you're already, uh, Damian, uh, uh, Dominic, but I know all his tricks and like, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Sheamus defeats Luke Kaiser in the first match. This match was longer than it needed to be. Then we see Jay, Jimmy backstage. And then we say Sammy shows up. Sammy says, "Like, uh, excuse me, you got, you gotta leave, so you, I, you, got, so I can speak to Jay alone." And then, like, you know, what are you doing? And, like, and then he acts like Jay, uh, "Why can't along with the bloodline?" You know. Uh, and then uh, uh, Jay then says, "Like, you sort of sound like you're on Solo's side." And I said, "No, I'm not. I'm not. I don't. I don't. I'm not on anybody's side. This is not like you know, lesser of, of the two evils. You, you, you need to be involved in this." You know, I don't know why you have to do this. You know, I understand. You know, like, you, you, like, but then, like, Jay says, oh, you ain't, you ain't family. That's why. And then he stares at Sammy and he walked away. So, like, what? Sammy's a little heartbroken? Like, whatever. Then we see, like, Jay said, Jimmy says, like, I'm going to talk to Sammy. Don't wait. Who's going to talk to him? I'm going to explain things. So, I guess you see Jimmy trying to, like, get involved in the story, trying to help, you know. So, it looks like, yes, yeah, Sammy is going to be involved with the bloodline story, which I don't hate. You know, I don't hate it. You know, I actually did like Sammy when he was in the bloodline. It's just the thing is, it just sucks that when he was outside of bloodline, he just became the stupid, goofy, pretend to be badass Sammy Zane, which I don't like. You know, so I don't know. We'll see what we can do. But it's just like, wow, like he just shows up after losing the world title match and he has done nothing. There's no explanation after that, after him coming back. Like, he has not been seen for weeks, and now all of a sudden he's back after losing the title match. Oh, but he had heart. He didn't, he didn't lose. He didn't tap out. Shut up. Ivy Nile defeats Elena Vega. No one cares. Um, then we see Seth Rollins. I, I'm the Revolution. I'm the Philadelphia Hershey. Uh, you know, I'm the Welcome back to Ivy Rollins. I'm the Revolution. I'm a missionary. But you know, here's one thing. I'm a monster. I'm a monster. You know, just like Bronze and Rhea, I'm a monster. And I haven't forgotten that part of me. That's something that doesn't come out. The Psycho Rollins is back. What mo- That's the 
most goofiest fucking promo I've fucking heard. Oh, you're a monster. Bullshit. Bull fucking shit. Oh, you're a monster. Monster of what? Monster of fucking getting pegged up the ass? Yeah, you definitely got that monster in you, don't you, fucking faggot? You fucking are a monster and fucking gay softcore porn and getting pegged up by your bitch wife. Yeah, that's that, yeah, that's a real monster. Huh? Yeah, really. Yeah, okay. You see, this monster is more of a monster than you ever be, fucking Seth Rollins. Like, holy shit. But then Bronson Reed's like, you know, ah. Uh, you know, I, I was told to not come in the ring to start stuff with you, but I'm in the parking lot. How about you come out here and, and face me on the man? And then, like, oh, you really want it, Rock? I'm coming to get you. And then, like, they all, you know, Appy's holding him back, but then Ross doesn't listen. He beats up Bronson Reed, and they brawl a little bit, and then he does the curb stomp, you know, lays him out. And I see that's what's going to happen. Then you see, oh, Bronson Reed is up, and then, like, it just kind of ruins the finisher. Like, I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck about Bronson Reed like that. And, like, him getting up already with the fucking finisher. Like, think about it. All the wrestlers that Seth Rollins has beat the curb stomp man, That literally buries the finisher. Now, I'm sorry. That buries the finisher. All for shock value. And it's not going to be any shock. Like, who gives a fuck? He gets up. And then Bronson Reed and Rollins roll again. Ross goes up to the fucking truck for no reason, and then, uh, I don't know, there's, like, the, you know, the, the, whatever, the, the truck where they has, like, a bunch of props and whatever, then Bronson throws a trash can, and get it, oh, they all, they all knocked out for a little bit, because Bronson Reed does a move where he takes everyone out, takes out himself out, sacrifices himself, get it, they go through tables, they go through, like, a Death Valley driver, but then Bronson stands up, and then Bron and Ross is hurt, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. We then see Miz, like, you know, oh, he's he, he's told to handle the shit with the white six. And then he goes after R-Truth. He says, yo, you know, R-Truth, you know, I'm sorry for what turned on. You know, let's get back those tag titles. And then, like, the Alpha Academy, not Alpha, yeah, Alpha Academy warns him not to do it because it's, like, Miz's ploy. And then, like, R-Truth's like, you know, man, man you, you rot me and, you know, we be friends and shit. That they seem to be back together, which is like, what, easy is that? Are we doing, like, something where r Truth is dumb? But then, you know, they kind of fooled us, where we think, like, really, is r Truth that dumb, where he's going to team up with The Miz again? He ends up slapping The Miz back, so it's like, he's not so dumb as pe people think he is. So he says, good luck with the Y6! You're going to die! Which is okay. War Raiders are the number one contenders for the tag championship, defeating the New Day in LWO because of Chad Gable attacking Rey Mysterio. I don't care. Uh, we see Jimmy, he's planning to talk to Sammy, but then we see both of them realizing that Sammy's talking to Solo. So there's no point in talking to Jay because he's already talking. We then see The Miz confronted by Karrion Cross. It's like, oh, if you don't handle this, then we're going to knock you out or whatever, or break your legs, okay? And in our main event, which is a useless main event, how many times do we have seen Dominic versus Damian Priest, by the way? Like, this match is, like, not, like, no disqualifications, something like... If you're gonna do another match, by the way, how about you change up the fucking match to a different stipulation that way people can fucking care? Um, no, this is just the same boring-ass match. The Judgment Day got involved. Finn Balor, I don't think he was... I don't even know what happened to Finn Balor. Like, so, because uh, aren't they, like, feuding J uh, Damien and Finn Balor? Are they really putting a pause in that feud? Just, just to prolong it even more? I don't fucking know. We see, though, Dominic, he won by distraction, so he beat, like, so he basically proceeded to do something out of the ordinary, I get, whatever, but it's like, who really cares at this point, but then Damon Priest is very angry, he takes out everyone in the Judgment Day, and then uh, Liv is scared with Raquel, like, rather than helping Dominic, they just watch, basically, even though they helped Dominic before, like, whatever, we don't even see Rhea Ripley, by the way, like, wouldn't that make, like, even Rhea Ripley was not on the fucking show or whatever, oh, but she cut a backstage promo, guys, I, even though I don't remember what she said, no, do I care, actually, let me look it up, what did she say, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know, all you need to know that Dominic got beat up by Damon Priest again with a bunch of chair shots, so I do be do, and that's how the show ends, it, it ends so, like, anti-climatic, you know, it ends so fucking plain. You know what I mean? Like, who really cares? Yeah, nothing much really happened. Like, I don't even remember what Dean, what uh, Rhea Ripley said. Like, what? Well, she's gonna, oh, you know, I, I'll i be patient, but I'll knock y'all out or something. I don't fucking know. So that's how the show ended. The show really ended plain. 
Like, do they not know how to book two hour shows anymore or raw? Like, are you like apparently like struggling with timing really? Like, they could barely fill up time in a three hour show. Now y'all fucking really suffering. I don't even know. Not that I care. It's a breath of fresh air that raw is two hours, by the way. It really does feel good because my god, three hours of fucking shitty raws has been a fucking nightmare. But my god, it even with two hours, like even though it's a breath of fresh air, it's still fucking filler garbage that they don't know how to see the fucking book of show. I mean, it was complete filler. I mean, the bloodline thing was fine. It just like there's a, a bunch of negatives though, but it's better. But like overall, the show was complete filler, pretty boring, you know, still, and just a bunch of garbage. So much for this go home show for Crown Jewel. I don't even feel excited. I don't even remember with by the bill of this show. I don't even feel like there's fucking a pay per view coming up. I'm just keeping real. Get your games, cold, magnificent, Spider Man, Spitz, Go Osho, shit. That's not done. Gotta say. Until next time. Peace. Yeah. Bye.